Hereby, they were awakened and animated to a more vigorous prosecution of the establishment of the house of God in its due government, in pursuance whereof the assemblies from that time until the year 1581 did with much painfulness and faithfulness attend to the work, until, by perfecting of the second book of discipline, they completed their work in the exact model of presbyterial government in all its courts and officers, which was confirmed and covenanted to be kept inviolate in the national covenant, subscribed that year by the king, his court and council, and afterwards by all ranks of people in the land. Whence it may be doubted whether the impudence of the succeeding prelates that denied this, or their perjury and breaking of it, be greater. This was but the first brush. A brisker assault follows, wherein, for the better establishment of prelacy, that what it wants of divine right might be supplied by the accession of human prerogative, and not only diocesan. But also Erastian prelacy might be set up to destroy Christ's kingdom and advance Satan's. The Earl of Arran and his wicked accomplices moved the king, contrary both to the word and oath of God, to usurp the prerogative of Jesus Christ, and assume to himself a blasphemous monster of supremacy over all persons and in all causes, as well ecclesiastical as civil. But this also the faithful servants of God did worthily and valiantly resist, and that the very appearance of it gave in a grievance to the king in the year 1582, quote, that he had taken upon him a spiritual power which properly belongs to Christ as only king and head of the church. The ministry and execution whereof is only given to such as bear office in the ecclesiastical government in the same, so that in the king's person some men pressed to erect a new popedom, as though he could not be full king of this commonwealth, unless as well the spiritual as temporal sword be put in his hand, unless Christ be rest of his authority, and the, two jur and the two jurisdictions confounded which God hath divided, which directly tendeth to the wreck of all true religion." Unquote. Which, being presented by the commissioners of the General Assembly, the Earl of Arran asked with a frowning countenance, who dare subscribe these treasonable articles? Mr. Andrew Melvin answered, We dare and will subscribe and render our lives in the cause. And afterward, that same assembly presented articles showing, quote, that seeing the spiritual jurisdiction of the church is granted by Christ and given only to them that by preaching, teaching, and overseeing bear office within the same to be exercised not by the injunctions of men, but by the only rule of God's word. Hereafter no other, of whatsoever degree or under whatsoever pretense, have any color to ascribe or to take upon them any part thereof, either in placing or displacing of ministers without the church's admission, or in stopping the mouths of preachers, or putting them to silence, or take upon them the judgment of trial and doctrine, unquote, etc. But in contempt and contradiction to this, and to prosecute and exert this new usurped power, Mr. Andrew Melvin was summoned before the secret council for a sermon of his, applying his doctrine to the time's corruptions, whereupon he gave in his declinature against them as incompetent judges and told them, quote, they were too bold in a constitute ch Christian church to pass by the pastors, prophets, and doctors, and to take upon them to judge the doctrine and to control the ambassadors of a greater than was there, which they neither ought nor can do. There are, saith he, losing a little he, loosing a little Hebrew Bible from his girdle, my instructions and warrant. See, if any of you can control me, that I have passed my injunctions." Unquote. For this he was discerned to be warded in the castle of Edinburgh. But he, being informed that if he entered in ward he would not be released unless it were for the scaffold, he conveyed himself secretly out of the country. Hereafter, when the Parliament of 1584 had enacted this supremacy and submission to prelacy to be subscribed by all ministers, the faithful first directed Mr. David Lindsay to the king, desiring that nothing be done in Parliament prejudicial to the church's liberty, who got the prison of blackness for his pains. And when... And then, when they could not get access to shut doors to protest before the Parliament, or could not get, could not get access, excuse me, for shut doors to protest before the Parliament. Yet, when the acts were proclaimed at the Cross of Edinburgh, they took public documents in name of the Church of Scotland, though they were but two, that they protested against the said acts and fled to England, leaving behind them reasons that moved them to do so. And Mr. James Melvin wrote against the subscribers at that 
that time very pertinently, proving first, quote, that they had not only set up a new pope and so become traitors to Christ and condescended to that chief error of papistry, whereupon all the rest depend, but further in so doing, they had granted more to the king than ever the popes of Rome peaceably obtained, unquote, etc. And in the end, as for those that lamented their own weakness and feebleness, he advised that them to remove the public slander, quote, by governing no, excuse me, by going boldly to the king and lords, and show them how they have fallen through weakness, but by God's power are risen again, and there, by public note and witness, taken, free themselves from that subscription, and to will the same to be delete, renouncing, and attesting it plainly, and thereafter publicly in their sermons, and by their declaration and retraction in writ, presented to the faithful, manifest the same, let them do with stipend, Benefice and life itself, what they list. Unquote. This I insert because this council is now condemned, and when poor people, offended with ministers' subscriptions of bonds and other compliances, desire acknowledgments of the offense, they reject it as an impertinent imposition, and plead they are not obliged to manifest any retraction but to an ecclesiastical judicatory, to which I shall say nothing here. But this is no novelty. After this, it is known what bickerings and faithful witnesses of Christ had in their conflicts with, his, with this supremacy upon the account of Mr. David Black's declinature, which they both advised him to and approved when he gave it in against the king and council as judges of his doctrine. And the commissioners of the General Assembly ordained all to deal mightily with the power of the word against the council's encroachments for which they were charged to depart forth of Edinburgh, after which he added in second declinature, uh, after which he added a second declinature, excuse me, quote, declaring, there are, two, there are two jurisdictions in this realm, the one spiritual, the other civil, the one respecting the conscience, the other externals. Therefore, insofar as he was one of the spiritual office bearers and had discharged his spiritual calling in some measure of grace and sincerity, should not, nor could not, be lawfully judged for preaching and applying the word by any civil power, he being an ambassador and messenger of the Lord Jesus, having his commission from the King of Kings, and all his instructions set down and limited in the book of God, that cannot be extended, abridged, or altered by any mortal weight, king, or emperor, and seeing he was sent to all sorts, his commission and discharge of it should not, nor cannot, be lawfully judged by them to whom he was sent, they being sheep and not pastors, to be judged by the word, and not to be judges thereof in a judicial way." Unquote. The interlocutor being passed against him for this, the brethren thought it duty that the doctrine of the preacher should be directed against the said interlocutor as against a strong and mighty hold set up against the Lord Jesus and the freedom of the gospel, and praised God for the force and unity of the spirit that was among themselves, and being charged to depart out of the town, they leave a faithful declaration at large showing how the liberties of the church were invaded and robbed. But all this was nothing in comparison of their wrestlings for the royalties of their princely master and privileges of his kingdom against the tyrant's insolences. After he obtained the crown of England, for then he would not suffer the church to indict her own assemblies, and when the faithful thought themselves obliged to counteract his encroachments and therefore convened in an assembly at Aberdeen in the year 1605, they were forced to dissolve, and thereafter the most eminent of the ministers there assembled were transported prisoners to blackness. Whence being cited before the council, they declined their judicatory, and one of their brethren, Mr. Robert Youngson, who had formerly succumbed, being moved in conscience, returned, and when the rest were standing before the council, desired to be heard, and acknowledged his fault, and therefore, howbeit not summoned by the lords, was charged by the living God, and compelled to compere that day, to justify that assembly, to the great astonishment of the lords, and comfort of his brethren. He subscribed the declinature with the rest, and for this they were arraigned and condemned as guilty of treason and banished. Before the execution of which sentence, Mr. Welch wrote to Lady Fleming to this effect, quote, What am I that he should first have called me, and then constituted me a minister of glad tidings of the gospel of salvation these fifteen years already, and now last of all to be a sufferer of his cause and kingdom? To witness that good confession that Jesus Christ is the King of saints, and that his church is a most free kingdom, yea, as free as any kingdom under heaven, not only to convocate, hold, and keep her meetings, 
conventions and assemblies, but also to judge all her affairs and all her meetings and conventions among his subjects. These two points, firstly, that Christ is the head of the church, and secondly, that she is free in her government from all other jurisdiction except Christ's, are a special cause, are the special cause, excuse me, of our imprisonment, being now convicted as traitors for maintaining thereof. We have now been waiting with joyfulness to give the last testimony of our blood and confirmation thereof, if it would please our God to be so favorable as to honor us with that dignity." Unquote. After this, the king, resolving by parliament to advance the state of bishops again, as in the time of popery, without cautions as before, and further, to establish not only that anti-Christian hierarchy, but an Erastian supremacy, the faithful ministers of Christ thought themselves bound in conscience to protest, and accordingly they offered protestation to the parliament, July 1606, obtesting, quote, that they would reserve into the Lord's own hands that glory which he will communicate neither to man nor angel, to wit, to prescribe from his holy mountain a lively pattern, according to which his own tabernacle should be formed, remembering always that there is no absolute and undoubted authority in this world except the sovereign authority of Christ the King, to whom it belongeth as properly to rule the church according to the good pleasure of his own will, as it belongeth to him to save his church by the merit of his own sufferings, as all other authority is so entrenched within the marches of divine command that the least overpassing of the bounds set by God himself brings men under the fearful expectation of temporal and eternal judgment. If ye should authorize bishops, ye should bring into the church the ordinance of man, which experience hath found to have been the ground of that anti-Christian hierarchy which mounted up on steps of bishops' preeminence until that man of sin came forth as the ripe fruit of man's wisdom, whom God shall consume with the breath of his own mouth. Let the sword of the Lord pierce that belly, which brought forth such a monster. Let the staff of God crush that egg, which hath hatched such a cockatrice." Let not only that Roman Antichrist be thrown down from the high bench of his usurped authority, but also let all the steps whereby he mounted up to that unlawful preeminence be cut down and utterly abolished in this land. And beware to strive against God with an open displayed banner by building up against the walls of Jericho, which the Lord hath not only cast down, but also hath laid them under an horrible interdiction and execration. Execration, excuse me so that the building of them, again, must needs stand to greater charges to the builders than the re-edifying of Jericho, to hail the Bethelite in the days of Ahab." Unquote. Yet notwithstanding of all opposition, prelacy was again restored in by Parliament, and to bring all to a compliance with the same presbyteries and synods, universally charged under the highest pains to admit a, con a constant moderator without charge, which many refused resolutely as being the first step of prelacy. Upon this followed a great persecution of the faithful for their nonconformity, managed by that mongrel and monstrous kind of court made up of clergymen and statesmen called the High Commissioner Court, erected in the year 1610, whereby many honest men were put violently from their charges and habitations, the generality were involved in a great and fearful defection. But the copestone of the wickedness of that period was the ratification of the five articles of Perth, quote, nearly at communion, private communion to be given to the sick, private baptism, and confirmation of children by the bishop, and observation of festival days, unquote which were much opposed and testified against by the faithful from their first hatching in the year 1618 to the year 1621. When they were ratified in Parliament, at what time they were also witnessed against from heaven, by extraordinary lightnings and tempests. And against this the testimony of the faithful continued, till the revolution in the year 1638. Here we see how the cause was stated in this period. And many gather also wherein it agrees, and how far it differs from the present testimony now suffered for under all rage and reproach. Number one, the matter of the testimony was one with that we are suffering for, against popery, prelacy, and supre supremacy, except that it was not so far extended against tyranny, because that tyrant was not such an usurper, nor such a violator of the fundamental constitutions of the civil government, as these that we have had to do with all. But as to the managing the testimony, they far outstrip their successors in this generation, in conduct and courage, prudence and zeal, as is above hinted in many instances, to which we may add some more. When several plots of papist lords have been discovered conspiring with the king of Spain, they were by the king's indulgence favored, and some were also persuaded to treat with them. Famous Mr. Davidson opposed with great resolution, declaring before the Synod of Lothian, quote, that it favored much of defection in these days, that such notorious rebels to God, his church, and the country 
should be so treated with, we should not rashly open a door to God's enemies without better proof of their manners, nor were yet seen." Unquote.